Welcome, <clears throat> I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. So far we have been studying the features of the meta language of Panini and Panini's grammar. Uh, we have studied three important features of the meta language and in the process, we started studying the concept of it, the marker and then we went deep into the text of Ashtadhyayi and we studied all the sutras that define the term it. This is a small section at the beginning of the third pada of the first adhyaya to be precise from 132 to 138 the it saudhnya is defined and we studied each and every sutra in some detail and we looked at some examples which are derived by the grammatical process and how it saudhnya plays a technical important role in this derivation by triggering a particular kind of grammatical operation. Now <clears throat> after having studied the sutras which define it, it is important for us to also study certain important functions of these markers, the it sounds and various operations that they trigger. So in this lecture, the broad theme that we are studying is the markers in the meta language of Paninian grammar and most importantly, the specific theme that we study here in this lecture is markers and their functions, the it sounds and their functions. So to recap, these are the eight sutras, these are the sutras which define the it saudhnya. On this slide there are six sutras which assign the term it to the consonants and then there is one more sutra upadeshe ajanunasika it which assigns the term it to the vowels. These six sutras on the slide are halantyam, navibhaktau tasmaha, these two assign the term it to the consonants in the final position in the initial enunciation and the rest adir nyetudavaha shap pratyayasya chutu and lashakvatadvite assign the technical term to the elements occurring in the initial position out of which shap pratyayasya chutu and lashakvatadvite they assign the term it to the initial consonant mentioned in the sutra if it occurs as part of a pratyaya. Whereas Adir Yintudavaha assigns the term it to three clusters, yi, tu and du which appear at the beginning of a verbal root, part of the verbal list. Now after having studied these sutras in details together with the examples, let us look at certain functions of the markers and on this slide are noted <coughs> some seven functions. First prescription of addition of suffixes, second specification of the position of an element that is added, specification of the position of a substitute that is the third one. The fourth one is modification in the element to which a suffix is added. Fifth is negation of certain modifications of an element. 
Sixth is accent marks. And seventh is meaning change. All these are indeed the functions of markers. And in this lecture, we shall concentrate on the first two, namely the prescription of addition of suffixes and the specification of the position of an element that is added. And we shall study the next five functions in the next lectures. So let us concentrate on the first function enumerated on the earlier slide. That is prescription of addition of certain sets of suffixes. Here we refer to the dhatu patha, the list of verbal roots. We have shown you what dhatu patha is in the earlier, earliest lectures. Now this list of verbal roots, which can also be called as the lexical items, these are tagged with the markers or the it sounds to indicate the set of suffixes that are added after them. In case of some verbal roots also adding a shade of the meaning. In the list of verbal roots, the verbal roots are all stated to end in a vowel. When in the grammatical derivation, they become consonant ending and are also generally referred to as consonant ending in the dictionaries and so on. For example, a dh together with two vowels a and a is mentioned in the list of verbal roots dhatu patha, whereas in the grammatical derivation it becomes a dh ending in dh consonant ending and is also referred to in the dictionaries etc in consonant ending fashion like this never mentioned like this. But in the dhatu patha this root is mentioned in this format a dh having two vowels in it. Now the vowel that is coming at the end of this root is termed it by 1 3 2. So this is an it vowel occurring at the end. This it vowel is further assigned three properties of accents udatta, anudatta and svarita. What they stand for we shall study when we look at the process of speech production in detail. Right now we should note that these three which are the phonetic features they are used only as metalinguistic device. So these markers are not to be pronounced in these fashions. They are just stated to be like that in the metalinguistic fashion as metalinguistic device and that is not they are not actually implemented. So no verbal root is actually uttered or written with the accent mark nor does this accent have any correspondence with the accent the verbal root has in the object language. So it should be clear now that this udatta, anudatta and svarita is purely a metalinguistic device and has got no relation whatsoever with the accent the verbal root has in the object language. Now let us look at the details. So, a verbal root is then qualified as udatet or anudatet or svaritet. Udatet means a verbal root having udatta accent as it. Anudatet means a verbal root having anudatta accent as it. And svaritet would mean a verbal root having svarita accent as it. Let us take examples. So now what happens to a verbal root which is udattet, which means a verbal root which has udatta as it. So after an udattet verbal root, the suffixes termed as parasmai pada are added by the rule 
1378 sheshat kartari parasmai padam so for example the verbal root patha over here which is listed in the dhatu patha as vowel ending patha ends in a actually it's pat when you take it in the grammatical derivation or when you list it down in the dictionaries you mention it like this and not like this but in the dhatu part it is mentioned like this with a at the end term to be termed as it and then it is also assigned the phonetic property of udat by convention and so this will be called udatte and then you add the parasmai pada set of suffixes after this pat which are this tip sip and mip etc so here are the forms we have already seen these forms in the earlier lecture pathati pathatah pathanti pathasi pathatah pathath pathami pathavah pathamah these are the forms having parasmai pada endings ti tah anti si tah th mi vah mah these are added after a verbal root now how do you decide whether these set of suffixes are to be added after pat or not they will be that will be decided on the basis of the accent conventional accent assigned to this it saudnya so this is udatte and that is what triggers the addition of these suffixes so these suffixes are to be added after only those roots which have this feature namely udatte let us look at the next example of anudatte so a verbal root which has an it vowel also another phonetic property of anudatt then the root is called anudatte and after an anudatte verbal root the suffixes termed atmane pada are added by the sutra 1313 namely anudattangit atmane padam so let's take the example of edh once again edh which is listed in the dhatu patha as a vowel ending element edh but when you start the grammatical process it is only edh ending in a consonant in the dictionaries it will be mentioned as edh ending in a consonant in the dhatu patha however it is mentioned as vowel ending for obvious reasons this a is termed as it and it is also assigned the phonetic property of anudatt and now this anudattet verbal root will get the atmanepada set of suffixes namely ta atam jha and so on so you get the form edhate edhete edhante edhase edhete edhadve edhe edhavahe edhamahe this is what you get and these forms having the atmanepada endings they are triggered because of this a being called an anudatta it so this anudatte triggers this addition now let us look at the swarite so a verbal root which has got the final vowel it and also in addition assigned the phonetic property of swarita will be called swarite so after a swarite verbal root the suffixes termed atmanepada are added only if the fruit of the action denoted by the verbal root goes to the doer of the action if this condition is satisfied then you add the atmane with the suffixes by the sutra 1372 for example yaj yaj ending in a vowel is listed in the dhatu patha in this fashion but if when you take it in the grammatical derivation you have it consonant ending yaj similarly in the dictionary it is mentioned as yaj so yaj and yaj now the purpose is obvious this a at the end 
is termed ith by 132 and the property of Swarita is also assigned to it. So, this yaja now is termed Swarita Swarita and then the Atmanebada suffixes are added after yaja if this meaning conditions is condition is fulfilled. So, eventually after the verbal root yaja both sets of suffixes are added to indicate the respective meaning. So, for example, you will add the parasmi for the ending and get the forms yajati, yajataha, yajanti, etc. And you will also get the atmani for the endings and add them to it and then you will get the forms yajate, yajate, yajante, etc. So, when you use the forms yajate, yajate, yajante, they will indicate the difference in the meaning namely that this action of sacrificing has generated a fruit which goes to the doer of this sacrifice. Only then you will use yajate. If the doer of the sacrifice is not getting the result of the sacrifice, then you will say yajati. Then you will use the word yajati. That is the difference between these two sets of suffixes with reference to certain kinds of verbal roots which are indicated, which are differentiated by this property called Swarite. This is one of the important functions of the markers, namely the prescription of addition of suffixes, certain kinds of suffixes. After having studied this function, let us proceed further and look at the second function of the marker, namely the specification of position of element. And here we will look at the consonants, consonants k, t and m at the end position are termed it by 133 and consonants k and t at the initial position with in within a certain domain of pratyaya are also termed as it by 138 and 137 respectively. And the elements to which these consonants are attached are called kit, tit and also mit when we add the word, add the sound m which is it to this list. So now the position of the element which is kit is the final addition, the position of the element which is tit is the initial addition and the position of the element which is mit is immediately after the final vowel of that element. That is the position that is specified by respective sutras. This is how the markers function. Let us elaborate on this by citing sutras and taking concrete examples. So, let us first of all focus on k consonant being termed it. So, the element to which k consonant is termed as marker or as it will be called kit. Now that element which is called kit is added at the end of a particular element and this is stated by 1146 namely atyantau takitau. This sutra may, means an element which is tit is added at the initial position of the element to which it is added and an element which is kit is added at the final position of the element to which it is added. The domain of this sutra is the augment or agama and it is important to note here that agama becomes a part of the element to which it is added. So, it is stated in combination of the sixth case which here means of similar to what it means in the object language. Let us take an example where k is termed as it. So, the sutra is ane muk 7.2.82. Ane is 7 slash 1 of ana. Muk is 1 slash 1 of m in which k is it and u is the stylistic use. Now, the meaning of this sutra is 
immediately before ana add ma as part of a stem that ends in short a there are words that are continued in this sutra namely ataha 6/1 of at that is short a continues from 7 to 80 and angasya 6/1 of ang which means a stem continues from 641 so the meaning of this sutra once again is the following immediately before ana add ma as part of a stem that ends in short a now here is an example <coughs> ma as part of a stem that ends in short a that is what is stated the question is where should ma be added and the answer given over here is that because muk is kit this ma is to be added at the end of the stem that ends in short a so you have an example over here where we take the verbal root yaj followed by the suffix a followed by another suffix ana in this case now with reference to ana yaj and a is the stem or ang that's why it is put in square brackets so now in this case because this ang ends in short a ane muk would add ma as part of this ang but because it is kit now this ma will be added only at the end that is in this place and not before here no it is to be added only here and then you get the form yajamana that is one who does the action of sacrificing that is yajamana so we derive the word yajamana in this way where ma is added at the end of the anga because it is kit <clears throat> now let us look at the tit element so tit element is added at the beginning of the element by once again 1146 adyantau takitau and it means an element which is tit is added at the initial position of the element to which it is added and the element which is kit is added at the final position of the element to which it is added once again the domain of this sutra is the augment agama and therefore <coughs> and because agama becomes a part of the element to which it is added so it is stated in combination of the sixth case the agama is stated in combination of the sixth case here is a concrete example lung lang drung shwadu dattah for example lung is the set of suffixes which express aorist past tense lung is a technical name of a set of suffixes which expresses imperfect past tense and rung is the technical name of the set of suffixes which expresses the conditional mood now at 1/1 is that of at and which means a and this agama a is called tit because this t is it by 1 3 so now there is another word udattah which means udatta that is high stress now this is the object language udatta we shall study what this means later on words continued in this sutra are angasya 6/1 of ang meaning a stem and this word is continued from 641 now the meaning of this sutra lung lang drung shwadu dattah is the following it means immediately before lung lang and rung add a as part of the stem that's all it says now the question is where should a be added and the answer given is because this a is tit because this a is tit it is to be added at the beginning of the stem so the meaning of the sutra is the following immediately before lung lang and rung 
add a as part of the stem. But the question is where should a be added? Should it be in the initial position or at the end position? But the answer is provided to us by the marker t which is added to a. Originally it is at, so t is it. Now because it is tith, because this a is tith, it is decided by 1146 that it is to be added at the beginning of the stem. So for example, we are deriving a pathat, we start with patha and lung and now the question arises, this is lung. So immediately before lung, there is this stem, pat. Now the sutra says, add a to this stem, where here at the beginning or at the end that is not specified, but the marker t specifies that this a uh, should be added before at the initial position. And so now we get a pat and then lung. Then lung is substituted by t, so we have a pat plus t, then this t is substituted by t, a pat, t, then there is an addition of a in between, a pat, a t, and finally we get the form a pathat. The most important point to remember over here is a here is added in the initial position mainly because this has a marker t. This is the function of the marker t to specify the position of this element a which is added to this put and that position is the initial position. Let us look at the third example of the consonant m being termed it and that element being termed as myth. Now the position that is specified for a myth element is immediately after the final vowel. This is specified by 1147 that is midachon tyat paraha. The meaning of this sutra is an element which is myth having m as it is added after the final vowel of the element to which it is added. The domain of this sutra once again is an augment, an augment or agama becomes a part of the element to which it is added. So it is stated in combination of sixth case which means of. Let us take an example, concrete example. The sutra is Trinaha M7392, Trinaha is 6 slash 1 of Trinaha, M is 1 slash 1 of M that is E. Now this M is having M as it by 133. So this M now will be called myth and the real augment, real meaning in the object language, the augment is E and this M is the marker, it. But now this will be called myth. Now where should we add this? We have to add this to this trana. Should it be before or should it be after where, what is the position? That is not specified. But now this marker ma will specify that. The words continued in this sutra are Sarvadhatuke 7 slash 1 of Sarvadhatuka and we shall see what Sarvadhatuka is later on. Piti, we have already seen what this means. Piti is 7 slash 1 of Pit having pa as it. And hali, we also know what this is, 7 slash 1 of hal. So all these three words have the same case, same number. So they will be interrelated. The verbal root used is truha, whose stem is trnaha. Truha means himsa or to kill or to slay. So now let us look at the derivation process. So we begin with trnaha. We are in this, at this stage trnaha plus t. This t is nothing but tip, p is a marker. So this is pit. Now the meaning of the sutra is add m that is e as part of the stem trnaha which is placed immediately before a sarvadhatuka suffix which begins with a consonant and which is pit that is which has p as it or a marker. So here is trnaha stem 
as indicated by the brackets followed by a suffix t which is termed as sarvadhatuka. This is also pith and this is also consonant beginning. So, immediately before a sarvadhatuka suffix which is consonant beginning and which has p as the marker we have trinaha stem. So, now 7392 has a scope of application and says that add m to this trinaha where do we add m that is the question which is answered by the marker myth. Since m is myth it is added after the last vowel of the stem which is a after an a. So, in trinaha we have two vowels one is ru immediately after the one is a immediately after an a. So, a is the last vowel in the stem and so this m is to be added immediately after this a that is what is stated by midha chontyat paraha. And so you get this form this is the derivation process. So, you add e here after this a. So, trina e ha ti then this gets substituted as trineh ti then trineh ti then trineh dhi then trineh dhi then trineh dhi and finally trineh dhi which means he or she or it slays. This is the derivation process and here at this stage our sutra midha chontyat paraha directs triggers the operation of addition of e in this position. So, the position of this e is specified by this marker me, m, myth. To summarize, two functions of the markers were studied so far, namely prescription of addition of suffixes to the verbal roots and specification of the position of an element added. So, it sounds that is markers are effectively used in Paninian grammar to trigger the addition of certain set of suffixes after the verbal roots. We have seen this and the, they also indicate these markers also will indicate a particular meaning shade that is if the fruit of the action goes to the doer of the action or not. In the process of substitution the position of an added element needs to be specified which is achieved by the use of the it sounds. What next then? So, we shall study next the remaining functions of the it markers namely the specification of the position of a substitute, modification in the element to which a suffix is added, negation of certain modifications of an element and accent and also meaning change. Thank you for your attention.